Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I bring you a variation of the smudge and bump technique that I showed you a couple of weeks ago. But instead of stamps, I'll use stencils, the ones that I designed in June 2021 and I'll create these three vintage cards. Although I designed some stamps as well on that release, I'll not use them today. I'll just use the stencils. If you want to get any of these products, there are many shops worldwide that carry them. Check out the links on the screen right now and in the video description. Okay, let's start with the first card. It's the longest one because the stencil is a multi-layered one, but it's so much fun to use. Okay, let's get started. So I just grabbed the stencils and I decide to use three different uh, inks because this stencil is multi-layered. So we are going to work in different layers. But first of all, I'm going to fix the back of my card to my surface because I really don't want to move at all. So this is just double-sided tape and with that I'll be free to go and use the stencil uh, without any fear. So I'm selecting the first ink. This one is going to be Spice Marmalade uh, Distress Oxide ink and I'm going to create the first layer which is going to be the full acorn. Okay, so this stencil has uh, three different layers. One is the full acorn then you have the casket or the top i don't know <laughs> and then you will see that you find the the three dots okay and what i will be doing is exactly what i showed you like a couple of weeks ago that i use with stamps that i apply ink and then even when it's still wet i will take a new sponge uh, and then smudge it so basically move it around okay that will just add some color to my background and it will also fade a little bit the sharpness of, in this case, the stenciled area, okay? In the past, what I was doing was actually getting the stencil, I mean the, the stamp, and then I was making it less obvious by uh, smudging it with ink. And here, well, I'm doing a similar thing, but just with the stencil. So I'm covering the entire area. Uh, I'm taking my time. And um, this first step, uh, it's pretty easy. And you just need to basically take time while doing it if you want to make sure that you don't go through uh, different parts you can mask them as well so just take your time and then cover the whole thing to create a very nice pattern and once you're ready then you move on to the next color of ink new sponge and here i'm just using vintage photo again an oxide and i'm creating the casket of those um, acorns and here again, if you want to make sure that you don't um, make a mess <laughs> and you don't start painting things that you shouldn't, then you could mask the other areas of the stencil, okay? I didn't do it and you'll see me that I kind of make a little mistake here and there, but that's okay. <laughs> so now I'm just moving the stencil again and then I'm adding another layer. And only with these two layers, I mean, I, I really like how these patterns looks so you don't even need the third layer with two is perfectly okay and it's really really nice <laughs> you get a pattern full of acorns and uh, this is almost the last one so all the time i'm doing that i'm applying the ink with one sponge and then i'm taking a new sponge and i'm passing it through to soften it down okay now i'm masking because i made that mistake you know so i didn't want that to happen again so I'm kind of covering all the holes to kind of be free and just apply those dots and in this case I'm using Versafine uh, Claire this is the uh, pine cone I believe color and then I'm adding the dots on top and I'm doing this everywhere and instead of using inks you could actually use crunch paste for example and you could get like dimensional dots and here I'm not smudging anything okay because well this one would really make a mess i believe <laughs> it wouldn't be that soft and or that nice so i'm just adding them on top nothing else okay and now i'm adding the title i'm nuts about you to create the bump effect um so after this ink which is going to be my shadow i'm going to clean the stencil and i'm cleaning it just with some alcohol um gel but you could just spritz alcohol like I'm doing here as well. So, And then once it's perfectly clean, I reposition it where it was. And I use crunch paste, which is a texture paste by Paper Etsy. 
that you may have seen me doing this in the past and I really like this technique so I put it up and left two millimeters two millimeters and then I put it through and that will create a shadow down and right because we have the first layer which is ink so that is my shadow okay so I'm just cleaning up that stencil and once I'm done I'm going to lift it and you will see the bump effect so that's pretty much done as a first step and I'm just going to add a little bit of detached photo distress um, all around the edges now I'm spritzing some water to make the distress react you could leave it without reacting but I kind of like the vintage look that it gets and now we'll move on to the next stencil and the next card for this one the pattern is much simpler it will be just a bunch of stars and I'm going to use faded jeans distress oxide one of my favorite colors as well for this sort of technique and I'm just going to put some of them and then leave the stencil because I want the ink to still be wet while I smudge it okay so then they create a little bit of a halo you don't see too much here because my ink is actually pretty dry I've used this technique so many times that I, I think I need to re-ink my, my ink pad uh, to be able to well be more effective with this but don't worry because you can always add a little bit more ink on the top as I would be doing later on to get a little bit more of that blue coming through so I'm just revisiting again the stencil in the same way and then I'm smudging it a bit more just to get that um, blue coming through if you apply it like that and then you smudge it then the halo is kind of around the stars if you just apply directly into the surface you will not get exactly the same kind of look it will look pretty similar and it may be okay I mean but I think it's nicer if the actual ink goes out from the star I think they pop up more so that's why I was adding the ink this way instead of just directly into the paper but I'll anyway add more ink <laughs> I'm sure because I always do that and now I'm going to add just a little touch of brown on the edges because I really like the combination of blue and brown I think it looks gorgeous <laughs> and then once I have it ready I think I'll add some splashes of water and perhaps adding well yeah some some drops of water drying it with the heat gun and once that's done then I'll be applying as I did before the sentiment so yeah when I apply those dots then there is a lot of white coming from those uh, drops so I'm sometimes add a little bit more ink so now I'm applying the sentiment, which in this case is love you to the moon and back. And it's a split in two because basically you can just use them independently. You can just use the love you or the other side. But in this one, I'm just adding the whole thing together and I'm applying it that way. So stacked one on top of the other and the same thing. First, a layer of ink for the shadow. Then I put it in stencil up and left two millimeters so then I apply the grunge paste on top and that will create that bump effect okay this one is at normal speed so you see how <laughs> how little by little I apply my grunge paste I'm not super fast okay so I'm really careful with this part so I decided to just show you in real speed how it looks now I think this one is not live I think this one is ah oh, yeah it may be yeah this is the normal speed as well so I apply again up and left and then I apply the stencil and the grudge paste on top and I scrub it through so then it's there and that will be the second card do you like it? I think it's pretty cool I like it very much and now the third one this is super super simple so I'm just going to apply two little trees over there with some ground um it's ground coffee no how is it called ground espresso oh my gosh <laughs> i didn't remember the name and then i was smudging it so it's apply what one tree and smudge it so i do two of them i mean you can be as complicated or as simple as you want so you can just see that with a little bit of of ink and just two of them stacked in a different way it seems that it's like like 
some sort of a forest, right? <laughs> it's only two trees there, but... And I'm going to cover the whole surface with ink, just to make it react with water as well. It's just a hint, so not too much. That one was regular distress. Doesn't need to be oxide always, you know. And I'm adding a little bit more ink. I want a, little wa a bit while with ink here. <laughs> so this much it doesn't, it's not that obvious in this one, but well. And now the bump for the bump effect again. I'm using this ink. This is one is waterproof and I'm using that so then it doesn't go through the grunge paste, which is water based. Sometimes the ink goes through the um, grunge paste towards the top so in this way it stays on the paper and it's not that affected by the ink and now after all those drops I'm going to just apply a little bit more ink and then the layer of grunge paste as I did before I put the stencil on the same position and I shift it up and left and then I apply it on top and then it will reveal the actual bump effect and there you go and you can hit set that directly with the heat tool that texture base is it's great it works really well and I'm preparing some bases because I want them to be framed they look nicer so I'm just selecting four different pieces of cardstock and with some fresco paint this one is French roast it's a brown dark brown I'm just painting them and I'll just paint the edges basically I don't need too much of it and then once everything is covered then I'll shift the position and paint the rest <laughs> that's a little trick instead of having a whole brown uh, cardstock you just need the edges because they are going to be hidden this paint dry dries super quickly but in this case for some reason my cardstock was a shiny side so uh, it was a bit tricky to dry and I just used my heat tool you can use that too so I'll assemble them just with some uh, double-sided tape adhesive and it's just like a super simple assembly. I mean, just put it on the edges and then stick it onto, onto the base. Just a little bit more on the center and just leaving the same gaps everywhere and that's it. So I'll be, we'll be attaching the three of them and you will see them how they look. I think adding a frame on one of those cards really makes a difference so I really like them like this so here are the three of them you can see the oxide that is adding this sort of white thingy <laughs> effect and then that part over there with the pattern and the stars and because the crunch base was so clean and then it was so close and it, it didn't stand out that much I decided to add some shadows and I'm just using a distress crayon and I'm applying it with with um, uh, what is it with a brush this brush is not a normal brush <laughs> it's a damaged uh, brush okay so I had one of those um, brushes that I applied some um, what is it well glue okay I applied some glue with it and then suddenly instead of having a brush I just had a piece of I don't know uh, plastic you know when you ruin one of those brushes and they are covered completely in glue and then it, the glue is completely dry you cannot do anything with it well now don't throw them away and then you can use them with the distress crayon and it's a fantastic way of actually reaching very little gaps and uh, all the hints and corners that you wouldn't get with the thick thickness of the normal crayon so it's a nice way to apply it there and by applying the crayon everywhere around the grunge paste and making it popping out because basically you're adding a shadow around all that paste and I think they look much nicer and yeah more more vintage even so then they pop even more perhaps a bit too dirty but <laughs> what do you think do you like it more with or without the crayon I think that adds a nice look on this one I didn't add any so this is all from today I hope you had fun and you like it if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel if you're new here and I hope to see you next week if I have a chance to publish another video that's what I'm trying and feel free to visit any other videos from my channel and I would love to read your comments so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye